So my name is Omar Abbasad. It is 2 p.m. September 10, 2020. So um, there is a lot of uh, harassment going on outside the window that I've been tweeting about. And I just posted a, a tweet with um, the blood pressure readings. So I, I took it again, and there is the reading. So I'm going to I'm going to do it one more time. So I'm just going to take this camera off and show you the reading of the detector. So I'm going to turn this towards me. Now I'm going to put my hand on here. Take the hand away. Hand. Okay, so the chest, and there are no magnets on my chest. So that's me. See the RF reading? That's my breast. My obliques. You see the RF reading is a little bit high there. This is what causes the cramping. That's my breast. Right over my chest. Right over my heart, I should say. Middle of the chest. Right side. Okay, so here is the RF reading right in front of me. Take the hand away. Get the hand back on. Take the hand away. Okay, so at other times when I did that, I got EF readings of over 2,000. And I think I did several, several um, videos showing that. So I'm going to take the blood pressure one more time. So that's the cuffs. One thirty three over eighty three. So I just got a scan on my chest. I'm not sure if you can see that. See that high number? This number right here. See the RF reading going up as well? That's causing a lot of heat and a lot of cramping effect.
in my hand. Look at this one. Notice the RF reading, which is normally around two. That's a 499 there. Is uh, going up, approaching 10, 16 there, 14. That's causing pain and pressure on the skin. And I heard that they haven't globally occupied me yet. So the same organization that is running this program, I am suspecting is running the COVID-19 program that is taking away all our rights. So speaking of COVID-19, could you imagine that, say for instance, Let's look ahead here and uh, say 10 million people died globally of the pandemic. We can even go higher than that. I'm just, I'm just um, uh, um, not even, even projecting a reality. I'm just, let's imagine the situation, a hypothetical situation. 50 million people dies of the pandemic. 50 million people. But because of the lockdowns, 250 million people are going to be dropped into abject poverty. No food, no shelter, no way to turn because everything is locked down. No way to get help. Discriminated against. And are going to die in a very short time space of time so this is just poverty uh we're not uh we're not uh, taking into account all the other situations that's not being looked after because this COVID 19 pandemic is taking away all the resources and um, um and all the attention is being drawn away from other issues so people are dying because of that as well so let's just say conservatively that number is um you know, 50 million. So just projecting. And let's let's fall back on being on being conservative. Forget the 50 million who's gonna die of for depression, um, of not getting proper attention because all the resources are being directed elsewhere, COVID-19 cases. Um, you know, let's take that away. Let's stick with the 250 million. So 250 million people are going to die in a short space of time because of the lockdown itself, as opposed to 50, 50 million people dying of the pandemic. Should the lockdowns occur? And this is all within the time between now and getting a vaccine. And keep in mind that the vaccine is uh, not going to be effective for any length of time, maybe six months. So you're going to have to be revaccinated. So think about the resources that's been taken up to manufacture those these vaccines and to distribute distribute them uh, through the government agencies to people. Free. Think of the money. All for a virus that kills. 5% of the people who are infected, 5%. The flu, I think, kills about, uh, I think, between 1% and 2%. So it's double, a little bit more than double the infectivity rate than the flu. But even given that scenario, the lockdown itself is killing millions and millions and millions more than the, the, the COVID-19 itself. 
And let's, and I am not even talking about or con taking into consideration uh, the effects of 5G, which is an inflammatory agent itself. When the power is turned up, and I just demonstrated that, when the power is turned up, uh, your body gets inflamed, and I just demonstrated this. The pain I'm feeling that is reflected in the higher blood pressure readings is because of inflammation. We are not even taking that into consideration. And uh, the 5G radiation uh, exacerbates the inflammation caused by any virus, any germ, any bacteria. Makes it worse. So is it a conspiracy theory? to say that the lockdown itself is a way of depopulating or carrying out a depopulation agenda of the new world order, which is now openly talked about. It's not a conspiracy theory. It does not make sense. The lockdowns itself does not make sense. What would make sense is the vulnerable people who are making up the larger portion of the people who die, all the people in old age homes, um, you know, make up 60% of the people who die. It would make sense that the vulnerable people protect themselves. And these are the people who should, um, you know, stay home and take all the measures that's necessary to protect themselves. If you need to wear masks or whatever you need to do, these are the people who should protect themselves. If the people think that they are vulnerable, then they should protect themselves by all means. That it does not make sense to keep the young people inside. It does not make sense to make a, a, a two-year-old wear a mask. It does not make sense to have the school kids wear masks. It really does not make sense because these are not the vulnerable groups. The, the infectivity rate and the, and the morb morbidity rate in, this, in the younger kids is just like the flu. No different. We don't wear masks for flu. Right? So it doesn't make sense. <coughs> Excuse me. Doesn't make sense. See the high RF reading on my face? So it doesn't, um, as I said, it doesn't make sense to have the group of people or the groups of people who are less vulnerable and who have the same reaction or the, uh, um, or the same um, rate of getting um, sick as the flu because if you take away if you take away the old people it's the same rate as the flu for the the people who are not vulnerable getting sick so does it make sense to to have these people locked down stay home shut down their workplaces when it's just as a flu if you take away the numbers of the older, really older people who are very, very vulnerable and very, very sick. Because if we take those numbers away, it, it, the infectivity, uh, the, um, the, uh, the, um, the rate of getting symptoms from it is the same as the flu, almost. It doesn't make sense. Lockdowns do not make sense. And yet we have people around the world, governments around the world, agencies around the world, who are locking down people very, very strictly. And people can't go out to get food, can't go out to work. Workplaces are shut down, restaurants are shut down, bars are shut down. People's uh, livelihoods are being taken away. People are falling into depression. And like me, I don't qualify to serve. And the jobs are now coming into the market. So what if I didn't have another way of supporting myself? Um, I would be out of my house. I would be on the streets. So this is a depopulation agenda and bringing us down to 
um, le a level that um, that is um, substandard living, like a communist country. It's it's bringing down the level of the a standard of living that people are used to. Kicking away the jobs and then uh, and then putting the power in government's hands. So we have a, a guaranteed income, a life uh, income. This is, uh, I agree that there are some people who are vulnerable and uh, these people should be helped and not go to have to go to food banks. Um, guarantee, a, a guaranteed level of income for, um, for uh, people who are, not in the in the job market in the in workplaces who are not working unemployed and older people vulnerable people absolutely but um what is happening is right now is the workplaces are being taken away to force some of us into that substandard Of living we are being forced we are being forced just like I'm being forced right here to carry out the will of somebody else and I'm being harassed outside the window and intimidated and I'm made to feel fearful inside of my home I'm being forced to do as the majority wants, I heard outside the window. As the manager wants, I heard the worker knows everything about me and he's been living with me for uh, you know, a long time and, uh, uh, and, and I was flagged and the cops were in here monitoring my unit and none of this has been disclosed to me. And if the cops came in here to look for, for whatever it is they were looking for because the people who are trafficking are telling lies to cover what they're doing and to criminalize me, to bring me down, to force me into what what they want me to do, which is, uh, you know, to 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 be trafficked basically remotely and then physically. This is a way of bringing down people. Well, COVID nineteen is exactly the same thing. It's a way of bringing down people. There is another agenda there, other than the one that the government is coming out and talking about. The Trudeau government is openly, has been openly um, communistic in its policies. You know, he's openly talked about being um, um, being open to the way China do, does things. He admitted that. So uh, it, this is. Um, when when Justin Trudeau ran for government, he ran on a liberal bill. And what he proceeded to do was bring in a communistic agenda. This is political fraud. This is deception. This is going in saying that you're going to do one thing and then do something else. The opposite, the exact opposite. COVID-19 is a tool, in my opinion. There is a virus, I am sure, called COVID-19 that's um, a piggybacking on SARS. But um, it could very well be that the virus is um, is a deliberate is a deliberate manufacturer. of uh, this whole scenario. It, it, the virus was deliberately manufactured to bring about this whole scenario that we're experiencing right now. It was made to happen, to carry out other, other agendas, which is very um, quickly done. It's coming about very, very quickly. So 
microwave technology goes hand in hand with exacerbating any condition that you have. Inflammation is just one. If you have a heart condition, the microwave signals will exacerbate that. Just taking my, and the blood pressure went down to normal. Because the power went down. Yeah, power went down. Okay, so I just wanted to put my face on the video because I'm not sure what uh, the, the people in the building are, are um, reporting about me. I hear the contract changed hands and I'm being um, made into a basketball where people are taking turns over and over. People in past workplaces are signing on, signing me out, and are passing me around to their network and by uh, subcontracting. And people are sub, 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 subcontracting. So just about anybody could be following you around. And this is exactly what happened when I called the cops and said the two Muslim women were following me around, calling me a prostitute. Um, when I called the cops, uh, they took off and um, the cops took uh, listened to what I had to say and took other people's statements, but didn't take any statements of mine. They took other people's statements, but they didn't take mine. Uh, and I'm the one who called, and I was the one who was being harassed. They went home and called the cops and said I was harassing them to cover what they were doing. Meanwhile, my brother had the contract to monitor me, and he was subcontracting to other Muslim people who were subcontracting to these two Muslim women. Cops, of course, knew that because the cops were running the program. The cops turned up at my door and charged me. So this is why I'm doing this, because I'm not sure what it is that the people from this building is telling the cops. And I'm not sure what the cops are going to be using to come to my door and drag me out. And the last time they did this and they falsely charged me and arraigned me, I almost died in a, in a, in a hot wagon with the hot air in my face and I passed out after asking them to turn it off. My hand was cuffed behind my back. The, 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 the wagon was about three feet by three feet dark. Uh, hot air blowing in my in my face, asthmatic, uh, and they would not turn off the uh, the heat, and I passed out. And afterwards, uh, I suspect I got a heart attack that was not diagnosed because I'm a target. So I'm not sure what the cops and the people in this building are planning, or including and conspiring to do because I am exposing what's going on, which is trafficking. I talked about Russell Williams. Well, Russell Williams' um, case was not properly disclosed to the people, in my opinion. I'm not talking about the details about the victims uh, and all the horrific things that he did. I'm talking about the investigation that went on that focused only on one man, right? Uh, the military has a history of trafficking. It's not the first time uh, a Russell Will, uh, um, somebody like Russell Williams. Um, well, maybe it was the first time in, 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 somebody like Russell Williams surfaced in the military because it, what he did was so horrific. Um, but trafficking is not something new to the military. Uh, and what my point is with the Russell Williams case, my main point was um, about the, the, the documentation. Because Bernardo did the same thing. He took videos and pictures. And he was involved in selling those videos in, um, in, in um, the underworld. So Russell Williams were taking these pictures and taking these videos when he murdered. 
But before that, he was breaking in and having these women centerfolded, taking lewd pictures, graphic, horrific pictures of these women who he left living. So these women are walking around knowing that, that somebody that they didn't know who came into their home, undressed them, and took these pictures, didn't know who had them. If he was going in there for his own pleasure, he would not have taken pictures and documented it with himself in some of these pictures and kept it in his home, um, not very well concealed. And I heard, uh, well, in one of his, in his interviews, or in his interview, I should say, um, where he confessed, in which he confessed, he said he kept one of the, the discs in the drawer in his workplace, in his office, not very well concealed. Why would he take it to his office if somebody else was not accessing that information, that, vid, that uh, disc? And he had it on his computer as well. So there are intranets that people can use, if not the internet, to access information on people's computers, right? He would not have taken those pictures if somebody else or a group of people, a network of people were not accessing it. So he was trafficking. He was trafficking. So uh, that case, there's a lot under, uh, under underlying that case, that investigation that was not told, in my opinion, to the public. And because it is the military, the public has a right to know. Rohini Bessasa said the same thing. She said she was being trafficked. She also said that people in high places are involved. Well, Russell Williams was somebody in a high place, was he not? So these are dirty military experiments. And trafficking, remote trafficking and physical trafficking that comes out of the remote trafficking is criminals in the military taking advantage of the position and advantage of the technology that they have access to and advantage, taking advantage of the network of the people that they're dealing with because uh, they think that they will not be sacrificed and it's all going to be fixed and all, all going to be covered to, to, to carry out these horrific crimes against women, basically, um, uh, uh, mainly. Bernardo, it, uh, I mean, you don't hear about men being raped this way and degraded this way and tortured. Women, it's basically women. So it's misogyny. These are crimes against women. And men are the ones who are investigating this. So uh, is it possible that people who are investigating, or some of them, were actually buying from the ring, were accessing this information? And just like uh, how uh, I'm being accessed, and I just proved it with these signals, because these signals wouldn't be all over the place if I wasn't being accessed remotely. Is it possible that people were logging in to Russell Williams and were remotely viewing what he was doing when he was raping those children, 11 years old, 12 years old? or were in their room, remotely viewing them while they were in their room, logging in. Because this is there is a military connection to what is going on in this building. Because I've been told in workplaces outright that you belong to the military. We're going to give it back to you. Let's give her back to the military. And there are two people who took contracts out who were in the military. There was somebody called Justin. His first name is Justin. I have no idea what his last name is. He was an active duty. He was posted in some base somewhere and he was on leave while he was uh, in the call center working or something like that. I'm not quite sure what the details was and why he was in the, in the call center at the time. So people in the military know about this. 
they know about this. And it's mainly crimes against women. So the women in the military are in danger. All women are in danger if this is going on. I have recorded and, and live streamed the viciousness of the comments outside the window. The worker who is in the loading dock every day, I will F this bitch. This is misogyny being live streamed from 25 Bamberg Circle in Toronto. And he encourages other women to do the same thing and has been doing it for the last years. I took him to the Human Rights Tribunal and he got it dismissed because I was tweeting about it. So I suspect that Russell Williams' case uh, uh, is linked into the, these networks of people who are procuring, including the cops, the dirty cops, who are bringing down people the way they're bringing me down and sexualizing them and degrading them by looking at them inside your home with the link and the password to be trafficked, satanically abused, trafficked, raped, tortured, and disposed of using directed energy weapons. And I just demonstrated directed energy weapons use and its effects, which can cause heart attacks and aneurysms and strokes and blood clots. It's time these things are talked about. We need to bring these issues out in the open. We cannot, as a society, go on covering it up all the time. There was a report about Paul Bernardo's case and the way it was handled. The judge put it down to miscommunication. It was really criminal negligence. The cops should have been charged for it. But really what it was about was a cover-up, in my opinion. It was a cover-up. Because the cops were involved in the trafficking. Well, the same thing with the military. People, some... The people who are accessing those files that Russell Williams were creating and accessing the women, I suspect remotely, covered it up. They made him the fall guy and, uh, and said, well, he was a loner working alone. Well, he wasn't working alone, in my opinion. These people cannot work alone, especially if he has the evidence lying around about him and so many incidents of what he was doing lying around easily found, very, very easily found by people in his life and people in his workplace. He wasn't, like he didn't, uh, he didn't take any, any real um, steps to cover up what he was doing. He parked his van, his SUV, in full view of the highway near Jessica Lloyd's house. The cops showed up at the house and knocked and went away. Whether they ran the plates or not, I don't know. That was never disclosed. It would make sense that they would. He showed up for the interview with the detective that was on the YouTube, that interview that was posted to our, um, to our two hour uh, 40 minutes or something like that. I don't think that was the whole thing, but uh, the parts that was posted, he showed up with the same boots that he wore on the crime scene, showed up with the same SUV, knowing full well that the cops were all over asking people about um, what was going on. They had, uh, they had uh, stops on the road asking people about what was going on, checking vehicles. So he knew the cops were hot on the trail of whoever it is that, they, that did, did it. From the cops' perspective, of course, he knew who, who did it. He knew the cops were hot on the trail, on his trail. But he didn't seem to care. Like, he, he didn't, he wasn't really very concerned that he was pulled in for questioning. If you look at that interview, that kind of demeanor comes about only if you know that what you did is covered 
he wasn't tense. He wasn't worried. He wasn't stressed out when he started that interview. He was laughing as if he was pulling one, you know, off over somebody, pulling something over somebody, running a huge trick, playing a huge trick. Well, he did. He made the entire country look like a fool, a, a bunch of fools. He made the military a complete and utter sham and uh, just showed how much corruption there is in the military and misogyny. I'm ashamed. When I looked into it deeply, I'm ashamed to be Canadian. I'm truly ashamed to be Canadian because what he proved was at the top of the, con uh, of the, the country's um, leadership network, there are satanic, misogynistic, violent, vile, diabolically evil people in some places who will stop at nothing to get what they want. Power hungry. This is what our leadership is really all about. Talk to you another time.